Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Miyagi Mornings, episode 51. I think I was off by a week, all week last week, and every time I, I did an episode, I uh, I think I got to number five back, like uh, like I was redoing a week or something, but I I have my uh, my reasons for that. It's been a, uh, it's been a rough couple weeks. Um, today, we're, we're going back to the well at MeWe, um, where if you go there and link up with me and look at my profile, you will see at the very top of my profile a sticky post where I take questions for Miyagi Mornings. And that's the primary way I'm getting input for, for what I'm going to do for Miyagi Mornings going forward. Just one way to get people using alternative social media. So this comes from John. John says, buying chicks through the mail, pros and cons, do you have a source? I would like to get all red sex links for egg production. I'm wondering which rooster I should pair with them. Uh, and then deplorably, Bonnie Blue says, I have no personal experience with this hatchery, but I've read good things about them. They're in Missouri, and it's a link to cackle hatchery. I have purchased um, chickens and ducks and turkeys and geese through the mail. I've had mostly positive results, and I'll talk about the, the pros and cons here. The primary places I've purchased... Uh, Metzer Farms, uh, they're just a great supplier of ducks with a lot of to choose from. Uh, they're in California. And Cackle Hatchery in Missouri. Those are the two that I have experience with actually ordering online and then having to go to the post office and get my birds or various other weird things that have happened over the years with this. So here's the, let's start with the good of buying birds online and having them shipped to you. In reality, almost every bird that you will ever buy was put in a box and shipped through the mail. It is very unlikely that if you go down to your you know, local feed store, uh, we have one here called Russell's that always has birds for sale. We have a big, kind of like a giant, super version of Tractor Supply that's much better. Uh, better staffed, better trained, better everything. It has a gun store inside it called Atwoods. And we have Tractor Supply. They have their chick days, of course. And what I, what I found with the feed stores in Atwoods is they tend to have birds almost all year round of some sort. And Tractor Supply does their chick days thing. So they have about a month to six weeks where you can even get birds there. But in the end, most of those places, it's highly unlikely that some local guy that hatches birds, you know, got in his truck and drove the birds over to them. They, they do the same thing you do. In fact, they often buy from the same places that you would buy from. This is not like um, some real competitive distribution chain where like, um, you know, a retailer is going to get pissed off that this provider sells direct. They have plenty of markup in there and they buy in bulk. Uh, they buy with, you know, if it's, if it's a tractor supply that was, they're buying with a corporate account. So they're getting quantity total across the board. So they get better pricing. It's just typical two-step distribution. So it isn't like you're going to save this bird from a journey in a box in the mail. And here's where we start to go dark. I have had birds lost in the mail. I had one time when I ordered a lot of ducks. Uh, Metzer made a mistake and shipped one of my boxes to another person. And I'm not sure if that person wanted another freaking 25 ducks or whatever. So you don't know what happened. Uh, we had, when we ordered them for a farm up in West Virginia, they got lost in the mail for three days. And, you know, two days in the mail for them, it's not as big a deal as you would think. They do just fine. They have so much nutrition reserves. And they feed them this little, um, this green gel stuff that hydrates them really well and gives them nutrient. And they're fine. But once you go over that, you start getting into problems. I've had birds that they put the, that green stuff in a little cup and they put it inside the box with them so that they can eat it out of the cup. And I had one one time, a little runner that got inside the cup upside down home. Who knows how long she was there, but um, she ended up with like a deformity due to it that was unrecoverable. Um, you will inevitably, when you order birds in the mail, end up putting all your birds in the brooder and looking at one and going, that one's not going to make it. Or two. Like... And that's one of the big disadvantages, right? That you, you, when you go, like I just brought some new ducks in. I should do some videos, but I've done so much of that already. I'm not going to raise them any differently, but they're in a brooder right now in the living room. And when I went and got the birds from Atwoods, I was able to go, not that one. Nope, nope, put that one back. Like I'm not the guy that's raising the runts. Like I could just look at that bird and go, there's something not quite there, not keeping up with her brothers and sisters on weight gain. Um, I knew they were all new birds because I had been in there a week earlier, so they kind of all came into one shipment, and one was definitely disproportionate, and it's like, no, I don't want that one. So you're less likely to have runs, etc. Now, the other side. When you very specifically know what you want, I want this breed 
and I want this many females and I want this many males, whether it's ducks and, you know, ducks and drakes or pullets and cockerels or whatever. Um, when you order by mail, in general, with most breeds, you can be, you'll pay more, but you can be very specific. I want eight ducks and two drakes of Rowan, and boom, that's what you get. Most of the time, in the stores, when you go buy the birds, unless we're talking like red sex links and certain pullets, you're going to get straight run. Now, this is the other thing to understand about straight run. If you're buying straight run from a supplier that only sells straight run, and again, you're not buying from the supplier, the, the store is, right? If they only sell straight run, period, for a specific bird type or whatever, you're getting straight run. If you are buying from a supplier and they sell, you know, chicken, they sell pullets for X and roosters for Y, all right? And they offer that and they also have a straight run price, guess what you're getting? Straight run. That means after they culled out all the females, because that's what everybody wants more of, you get whatever's left. And sure, some of them weren't sex, but I'm betting you, because whenever whenever I've seen this happen, your ratios are right around a 50-50 on a true straight run, and you end up more like 70-30 when you get bull, what I call bullshit straight run. Well, so you don't know when you buy straight run at Tractor Supply or Atwoods or something like that. When they bought... Was it really straight run or was it leftovers? And it's probably a combination. It's probably not that bad. And you still have roll of the dice anyway. Um, the big thing is you know the health of the bird when you bring it home and you buy it in person. But if you want to dial in and certain things that you might want, like if you want Welsh Harlequins, you're probably not going down a tractor supply and getting Welsh Harlequins. And if there's one in there, you got lucky. Right? So that's what it comes down to for me. Same thing with like turkeys. Like... When you go get turkeys at a feed store, to me, you pay like three times, even including shipping. Like, they're really, really expensive. So, I will I would source turkeys from, uh, honest to God, I would probably get my tur turkeys from um, from Cackle. They're probably the best place to get turkeys from that I, I can come up with. So, it's, there is no right answer here. It comes down to what do you want and can you get that if everything was equal? If I'm in a situation that this individual to ask the question, they want red sex links. Okay. Just know that red sex link is like a trade name for a bird that can be distinguished by its appearance that lays eggs really well. So like black stars, red stars, red sex links, like they might be a different colored bird or whatever. It They're pretty much the same bird. So all of these birds that can be looked at are a sex link. That's what it means is that they're, they're patterned when they're born instead of you know checking the oil under the hood, which is difficult with a little baby peep, right? It's time consuming. You can pretty much look at the bird and go, oh, female, male. And that, that's what that's about. And then these are a high production. Production reds, red sex link, same bird, right? So if that's what you want, this is the good news. You probably can get those locally. You probably can go down to Atwoods or whatever and get them. What you probably can't get is guaranteed cockerels. So then you have to start looking for, well, what rooster? Now, if I was going to breed a rooster to a sex link pullet, and I wanted a rooster for my flock, the obvious answer would be a red sex link cockerel. You may be able to get them. I don't know. You have to check with your supplier. Um, if you order them, see, now you know you can get them. Right? They'll be happy to send them to you. Right? Um, but... Truth is, the majority of them are euthanized. Now, that sounds awful, but they don't make enough meat to economically make sense. If somebody gave them to you, right, and said, here, they're free, when you look at what it takes to raise them to a, a substantial meat yield, they're a net loss, right? Now, a homesteader, like I've always said, like homesteaders might be different, and you might be able to find... Some local hatcheries that will give you, give you cockerels if you find them. I mean, it's, it's pretty gruesome how they get rid of them. I don't want to talk about it. I know some people let their kids watch this stuff. Um, but, yeah, they're gone that fast. Let's just put it that way. And so it may not be the case that you can get one. Rhode Island Red, fine. Like, it doesn't really matter. Like, I think we need to get a little bit off of, like, unless we know why we're doing it, like, I can understand why you might pick a breed that's in real high demand, that commands a higher price, 
to sell like chicken, you know, live chicks or well-started chicks or something like that. I understand if you're doing this for your own backyard, I think the breed snobbery should go away. Our grandparents, our great grandparents all had kind of their own chickens and they were just like, they traded birds with each other and they just kept breeding and crossbreeding. And eventually they ended up with re like they, by, by so like, like this bird is just not what I'm looking for. So out of the genetics, this bird comes. And so we'll go ahead and put her in the stew pot or put him in the stew pot and then we'll wait a while and then we'll go ahead and allow a hatch like that. That was done. You know, if you walked up to my grandfather, we had our little chicken house. We had about eight birds lived in it and a rooster. What kind are they? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it, they, they're mongrels and mongrels have a lot of uh, luck going for them. If you've ever owned dogs, you know, purebred dogs are always the ones with all the problems. And mongrels are generally the ones that are just like, they don't, they, they just live like 16, 17, 18 years of age. And then they kind of crash at the end in old age instead of having all these different like joint problems and stuff going through. So I think there's some the value in that. But I'm sorry if this is, seems like a non-answer. But I mean, it, it really does come down to that. If you specifically want something you can't buy locally, I would order it. And I would order more than you want. Like if you want 10 females and 2 males in some arrangement... I would probably order at least 12 females and three to four males just because you don't know which one's going to show up and be kind of messed up or whatever. And it's, it is inevitable and it's not that they're doing it to you. They're not screwing you over, whatever. Basically these hatcheries, especially this year and last year with the demand increase, basically they have, they know roughly how many will hatch on a date already like months out and people are ordering birds months out so these birds are hatching assuming the birds alive and dry after that hatch comes they're just grabbing boxing and shipping to you it's a little bird to them it's a product and that doesn't mean they don't respect it but in the end when you're shipping in the tens of thousands you have to get kind of industrial with your process and that's why i wouldn't put too much worry about the straight run thing Unless, like I said, if you see the option to buy sexed and you buy straight run, just think logistically what you would be doing. What are you going to do with all this, this weighted mail? I just throw them in the box with a bunch of other fresh hatch. And basically what they do is they, they go through enough to get all the females they have to deliver. And then whatever's left is straight run if they offer that option. Just keep that in mind. If you want any more on this, if I didn't cover it well, I feel kind of all over the map on it. I'm sorry, you guys. It's a... Uh, it was a, a long weekend, and we had some events this morning, and what have you. And I and I've got huge freeze coming in, so this might not be my best work. But don't hesitate to do it, but don't do it unless you need to. I guess is the short answer. Take care, guys. We'll be back tomorrow.